Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x squared plus 3xy equals 45 and y squared minus xy equals 4. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. And I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I want to isolate one of the variables. So I'll work with the second equation. Let's go ahead and isolate x from here. You can kind of switch these around and then divide both sides by y and that's going to give you x by itself. So x can be written as y squared minus 4 divided by y. This is something I can substitute into the first equation. The top one is considered the first by the way. I have x squared plus 3xy equals 45. Now let's go ahead and replace the x with what it is. That's going to give us y squared minus 4 over y squared plus 3y multiplied by y squared minus 4 over y and then the y is going to cancel out and on the right hand side we're going to have 45. Let's go ahead and expand the numerator. We're going to square this and divide by y squared and then 3 will be distributed. 3y squared minus 12 is equal to 45 and then we're going to go ahead and multiply everything by y squared because we want to get rid of this y squared, right? If you do that, you're going to get y squared minus 4 quantity squared plus 3y to the fourth minus 12y squared equals 45y squared. Notice that we have to multiply on both sides. And now let's go ahead and expand this. y to the fourth minus 8y squared plus 16 plus 3y to the fourth minus 12y squared minus 45y squared equals 0. I set everything equal to 0. And now we can go ahead and combine like terms. We have 4y to the 4th minus 8 minus 12 is going to give us minus 20 minus 65y squared. And then plus 16 is just going to be our constant, right? Cool. This is a biquadratic equation, which means by way of substitution, you can actually turn this into a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and set y squared equal to t. This gives us 4t squared minus 65t plus 16 is equal to 0. So you can do a couple different ways. For example, you can use the quadratic formula or notice that 65 is 64 plus 1. Is that significant? Absolutely. Take a look. We're going to go ahead and split it up into minus 64 minus 1t and then plus 16. And now this is going to be factorable by grouping because if I take out a 4t that gives me t minus 16 and if I take out a negative 1 that gives me t minus 16. So we get a common factor and you don't have to use this because this doesn't always work nicely. You can use the quadratic formula and now we can kind of write this as t minus 16 times 4t minus 1 equals 0. Great. From here we get the following solutions. t equals 16 and t equals one fourth, right? But t is y squared. Let's go ahead and set t equal to y squared. And from here, we get two values because if y squared is equal to 16, y is going to be 4 and negative 4. And by the way, be careful about this. If they ask you square root of 16, that's kind of unique in the real world. But if somebody asks you the what number squared is equal to 16, there are two answers. Make sense? And from here, y can be 1 half or negative 1 half. You could also write this with a plus minus sign, and that will be the same thing, right? So we got four values for y, right? This kind of looked like a quadratic equation, didn't it? Or a quadratic system, maybe. Well, not really, because we solved a quartic, remember? Anyways, so from here, we got the y values, and how can I find the x values? Easy. Use one of the equations, or... If you remember, we replace x with y squared minus 4 over y, right? x was y squared minus 4 over y. So, for example, if y is equal to 4, you can go ahead and plug in y equals 4 here. 16 minus 4 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is just going to be 3. So, if y is 4, x is 3. In other words, 3 comma 4 is going to be one of the solutions. But it's only going to be one of the solutions. And how do you find the other ones? The same way. For example, if you plug in negative 4, you're going to get 16 minus 4 again, 12. But 12 is this time divided by negative 4, which is going to give you a negative 3. And this should kind of, this should tell you that there is some type of symmetry, right? 
not completely, but x, y's maybe. <laughs> okay, great. If y is equal to 1 half, then you can do the same thing, like 1 fourth minus 4 divided by 1 half. And notice that this is going to be negative. You can kind of write this as 15 over 4 with a negative sign, and then that's going to be negative 15 over half, right? I think that's what's going to be negative 15 halves. And then if y is equal to negative 1 half, right, then you can again find the values. Hopefully you get the idea. You just plug it in and find it. By the way, let me go back to the, what I call the third method, even though we're not going to finish it up. I just want to talk briefly about it. And it's basically, if you go ahead and, for example, isolate y from here, you have to solve a quadratic equation, which you can solve as, treat the y as a quadratic. Notice that this is kind of y squared, and this is y. So x will be considered a constant. y is going to be negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, minus 4ac. By the way, that's just going to be a 16. And this is going to be the y value in terms of x. And then we have another equation, obviously, right? Of course. And now you can replace the y with that. And good luck with that, really, seriously. And there's only one y, so it's not super bad. But it's still bad. You know why? Because you're going to have to, let's just use the positive sign, plus sign. And this is going to be kind of painful because you will have to deal with a radical, radical equation. So you kind of have to isolate the square both sides, so on and so forth. And hopefully that's going to give you the same quartic equation at the end. I haven't tried it, but go ahead and give it a try and let me know what you find. All right. So now is a good time to talk about the second method after a brief overview of the third method. And if you find another third method or the fourth method, please let us know in the comment section down below. All right, great. So this problem is what some people would call a contrived problem because obviously these types of problems appear on math competitions and sometimes higher, harder problems will appear on Olympiads. And, you know, they are designed for a special purpose, obviously. They're not random. So, for example, if you add these two equations, you probably saw that, right? Some of you at least. You're going to get x squared plus y squared plus 3xy minus xy is going to give you 2xy. And 45 plus 4 is 49. What do you notice? <laughs> Hopefully you know that this is x plus y squared. Uh-oh, we got a perfect square on both sides. Let's square root both sides and we get x plus y is equal to 7 or x plus y is equal to negative 7. Obviously, this is what I mean by contrived, but that's what the nature of these problems are. So don't complain, please. If x plus y is equal to 7, from here I can kind of isolate x as 7 minus y. And then remember the first equation, which is our favorite, right? x squared plus 3xy is equal to 45. And now we're just going to plug in this for x, 7 minus y squared plus 3y times 7 minus y is equal to 45. And go ahead and expand this. You're going to get 49 minus 14y plus y squared plus 21y minus 3y squared equals 45. This gives us negative 2y squared. Put it on the right-hand side. That becomes positive. This gives us positive 7y. Put it on the right-hand side with a negative sign or opposite sign. And subtract 49 from 45. That's going to give you a negative 4. Wow, this was a lot of work, right? And then from here, using the quadratic formula, you're going to get something like negative b plus minus square to b squared minus 4ac. It's going to be 49 plus 32. And guess what that equals? That equals 81. So square root it, you're going to get 9. And split it up, you're going to get 7 plus 9 over 4 and 7 minus 9 over 4. 7 plus 9 over 4 is equal to 4, and it's equal to negative 1 half. These are the y values. If you plug them in, you're going to find the x values the exact same way we did before. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.